demilitarized zone January 20th, 1968. It was moving my squad across an open area into a village. I took a 30 caliber bullet uh, through my right foot, got a hole in it. And uh, I took another 30 caliber through my right shoulder and went through my lung and it severed my spinal cord, paralyzing me permanently from here down. But I can't move or feel anything from here down. It's numb and it's as dead as anybody who's died in the war in Vietnam. And What has happened is the recon vehicle is now in, on its way to San Diego. It's been gone for over an hour, hour and a half. The recon vehicle is going to go to get the San Diego people from Texas Way and is going to take them down two or three off ramps to where there's a bunch of gas stations and stuff, okay? Now, at that off ramp, there'll be a blackboard set up. Now, that blackboard will have VVAW, last patrol, will have the whole smear on it, and it'll be sitting out the side of the road so that you can catch up with it. You say you were going to? He's taking, he's taking a picture. He's taking a picture. Oh, we'll look the radio up last, man, when he gets back. Get him. Isn't that stupid? But you don't know how to hook up the radio? Well, we got to get it out of Jack's car. Oh, Ron Do you know how to hook up the radio? Yeah, yeah they do. Well, I, I guess they were the last vehicle. But so that's all they could do. They probably ran a red light or something. They didn't do anything? Well, they didn't run a red light. Just because they conditioned it, I think. They're going to hassle us all the way down. They started with the last one. They're going to keep pulling those people right. off doing that. Okay, so you're back them. in, right? Yeah. Do you let them search? Yeah. yeah. When anybody else gets stopped, all right, to, to, hassle with the, uh, to hassle with the pigs, we'll have that last car back there, you know, that red Fiat that was tailing. We'll stop and find out why you're being stopped, okay? We'll try to check out and try to help you. At that point, the rest of the convoy is going to have to continue on. August 15th, 1972. A group of Vietnam veterans prepared to depart from California State University at Northridge on a historic last patrol to the Republican National Convention in Miami five days and 3,000 miles away across the southern United States. Similar convoys are leaving from Salt Lake, Detroit, Chicago, and New York, meeting their brothers and sisters along the route and converging on Miami. Stay in your car.
spent uh, about a week in the intensive care ward in Da Nang. I saw people totally destroyed by this war. I saw babies who had been napalmed by American planes. I heard them scream every night. I saw a Korean civilian who lost both of his legs, one of his arms, and had two fingers, and used to wave it over his head and scream and moan. I can still have, I still have, I still have nightmares uh, uh, thinking of this guy screaming, you know. And there was a Green Beret who died of spinal meningitis, and a black pilot who died right next to me while I was writing a letter home to my family, a uh, USO volunteer. Lucy Colwell was helping me, and this black pilot just died, and they jumped up on his chest, and they started beating on his chest, you know, as, as hard as they could. And then they got this electric shock machine, and they shocked his heart, and his body kept arching up, and his face kept floating up, and his whole body looked like a, like a balloon, and he had fluid coming out of his eyes, and then all the people around him, the Coleman that was pounding on his chest, all these people were working furiously to save this man's life, you know, and they, and they started joking and laughing. It's the only thing they could do, they'd go crazy. And they put a sheet over his head and they took him out and they brought another man in. And uh, I spent seven days in that place. I was on morphine every two hours. And uh, they put me in a circle electric bed, had tubes in my chest, tubes in my, my, my feet. They were draining. My lung had collapsed. That bullet passed through my lung and collapsed. And uh, and I just I laid there for about uh, about six days. I listened to people scream and moan. I saw people who would never walk again. People who would never see again. Men, women, children, totally destroyed by uh, by the war. Selling your soul out for what you are taught is the right thing. But at the same time, you should know better. So what this trip does, I suppose, is work off our guilt for the crimes we have done, and that our parents and the establishment want to reward us for. We expect that we should have a great effect on the people across the country. We expect to let them know how we feel and why. But most of all, it's probably working off our guilt. You see, I feel that the main issue in this campaign is, is the Ten Commandments, and they aren't even dealing with that. Nixon will win, but this country will lose. We're losing every day. Lose the war, lose your soul. It's sad, man, sad, but we're the biggest losers. Unwanted children. Someday soon the peace will come. But you see, the damage has already been done. It's corrupted America. And they'll pay for this war. I think it's a good idea from now on that you think twice about where you stop. Because this place here looks like an oppressive Indian. That's the establishment about this, man. That's it. On the other side, man. Just let's go on the on-ramp over there. For so long now, People that have spoken out against this war in Vietnam have been classified under all different kinds of derogatory terms, ranging from cowards to communists. And I think that as veterans, we hold a credibility. In fact, I think that we're the most patriotic force of people in this country. I don't think patriotism means hanging American flags all over your car and saying, love it or leave it. One newspaper editor comments, is all this planned? Of course it is. It is the great brainwashing project through which the communists hope to prepare the United States for easy plucking. We don't.